Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our play-by-email game against XTRG. It is on to January 28th of 1942. We are slowly, ever so slowly, inexorably moving toward February in the third month of the war, but for the moment we remain in the second month of the war, the back, ha the back half, obviously, nearly the end of the second month of the war. And we are playing as the Allies, XTRG, that famed rascal, is playing as the uh, Japanese. And in today's episode, we are hoping to continue to hold off the Japanese at New Caledonia and see what other things might occur uh, in the Pacific. The Japanese are launching a serious thrust in the South Pacific. We have been attempting to slow that. We don't have the strength to stop it, but we're at least attempting to slow it here. And uh, we'll see how things play out. Meanwhile, we can see the turn starts off with a depth charging of the SS Cuttlefish. Uh, no hits there. Meanwhile, the Japanese are firing torpedoes at the uh, patrol gunboat Sorabaya, which um, on previously... Actually, no, I'm getting... What is what is the Sorabaya? It's a gunboat, right? It looks a lot bigger than a gunboat. I don't know. Anyway, the tanker Sun Chaser just got hit by torpedoes, and that sucks. Multiple torpedoes into the side of the Sun Chaser, just off the coast of Oosthaven, and she sinks. So we just lost a tanker. I think that's our second tanker that we've lost uh, in our efforts to get oil out of the Dutch East Indies. And, um... An old armored cruiser like a G-Man? I thought it was like, um... I thought it was something else. I thought it was like a, a, a pre-dreadnought battleship or something. I thought someone had said something like that, but maybe you're right. I don't know. Um, I just remember looking at it and thinking it's a gigantic silhouette for a ship and uh, wondering what it was. But for a, for a gunboat, too, right? Usually gunboats are pretty small. Um, you were talking with Goose? You were talking with Goose where? Was that on our last stream or the previous stream? In any event, more depth charging off the coast of uh, stuff. Torpedoing patrol boats doing nothing. More depth charging. More submarines doing nothing. More nothing. Okay, we're into the air phase. Um, you thought it had 11-inch guns? Interesting. All right, so Japanese Nell bombers are going after our mine motor motorboat launches off the coast of Singapore. That's fine. Go ahead and waste torpedoes on those ships that are worthless. Fast forward through that. 68 fighters sweeping over Singapore. We'll go ahead and fast forward through that. I don't. If he wants to fly sweeps over Singapore, I'll be all the more pleased. Um, 30 some odd bombers uh, attacking Bataan. See, we did some damage to them. They're bombing from 16,000 feet, so they are above our the bulk of our flak, I believe. That P-35A did fly to intercept, but didn't actually do anything. Meanwhile, now he's flying, and there's 39 Nate fighter interceptors against him. Um, now it says 30, 38, so he damaged one. We didn't lose anything in that raid. Okay. So, still nothing going on. More bombing. This is kind of, I, I, I don't know, I'm not, not super excited for this turn, because if anything happens, it's not going to be what we want to happen. Anyway, we're dropping some bombs on the Imperial Japanese Guards Division, so the Japanese do have a, a full division there on the northern north of Singapore. Presumably more than that, but the Imperial Guards Division is one of their best divisions. I think it starts out in Saigon, maybe, when the game starts, or maybe it's Kamran Bay, or maybe it's Bangkok, one or the other. He's clearly brought it down the peninsula. Alright, let's fast forward through. This is going to be a pretty quick turn, I think, because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot going on. I haven't seen a lot of ships spotted. More Nell bombers going after motorboats and mine minesweepers, etc. More bombers. Oh, these bombers are flying off the coast of Bataan. Not really doing anything. You think this turn's going to hurt, J Street? I haven't seen anything that suggests this turn's going to hurt so far. But hey, I guess maybe you know something I don't know. Dive bombing in China, doing no damage. Okay, so he's got a, li a few bombers going against Singapore. 12 Lily bombers, along with nearly 80 fighter escorts. He is going all out on protecting uh, and sweeping and trying to destroy our, um, 
our our fighters based out of Singapore. Those bombers he's sending are bombing the airfield, but there's not enough of them. 2,400 kilogram bombs. These aren't smart bombs. You're not going to be able to take an airfield out with a total of 24 bombs. Uh, and you can see there they don't even strike a single hit on the runway in that raid. So good result for us. Uh, 13 lilies coming in unescorted, so uncoordinated. Another 2,600 kilogram bombs don't hit anything. Meanwhile, they're getting damaged by flak, so that's good for us also. Um. All right, we'll fast forward through that. Submarine firing at the destroyer, doing nothing. Surface combat check, more submarine actions, more nothing. More nothing. Bombardment attack at Changsha. We're going to fast forward through that. We have a lot of troops at Changsha. I'm debating pulling some of those guys out across the river. Mainly because if he's going to attack us, he's going to crush the bulk of our Chinese forces. So it might make sense to get some of those out. Plus, they're, they're using a ton of supply. We have almost 200,000 troops there, by the way. Japanese bombardment attack at Wang Kao. Nothing happens there. Deliberate attack at Puching for the Japanese. And their attack fails. Okay, so they had considerably stronger forces than us, but we have fort level twos, and that results in a one to two advantage for the defenders. The Japanese lose 68 casualties versus 38 allied. A pretty minimal engagement. That was basically like a skirmish. That's kind of interesting. Meanwhile, a bombardment attack at Bataan. So it looks like he has troops in Bataan now. Not a ton of them, though. He's only got two full divisions, the 16th and the 33rd division. And then he's got some engineer regiments, and he's got some artillery regiments. That is not enough men, I don't think, under any circumstances, to drive us out of Bataan. I suppose the engineers could reduce fortifications if he launches an actual attack. But we have probably about 2 to 1 in terms of uh, assault value against that. The problem is, given the terrain and given the quality of troops, if we did try and launch a counterattack, it would almost certainly fail and we would lose a shit ton of men. So as appealing as that would be to counterattack, and he's got way more than 900 men if he's got two divisions there, it looks like his assault value is 824. Um, which is interesting, because the attacking force numbers only show you what's actually participating in the bombardment, but the assault value shows you the whole thing, which is weird. So we have more than twice his assault value. We also have level four forts, and as a result, this bombardment was an absolute failure, an absolute disaster for the Japanese. I mean, not like a meaningful disaster, but... They bombarded us. We lost nothing. They lost 24 guns, 12 destroyed, 16 vehicles, 1 destroyed. That is, That might, might be one of the worst bombardments I've seen in my time in this game. And um, that's, a, that's a tough blow to them. You know, that, they lost all, almost half of the guns that participated in the bombardment. That is some effective counter-battery fire by our troops. Again, they're in level 4 fortifications. I'd be tempted to counterattack, but again... Batan's terrain will give him a big defensive bonus, and the Japanese troops are much better than us anyway. And so if I did launch that counterattack, um, it would be uh, probably ill-advised. I was talking to Belugan uh, about, um, you know, if, if he moves in insufficient forces into Batan, uh, because they were actually here last turn. These troops didn't just arrive. They were there last turn. Um, and uh, I think what he had kind of said was that um, you know, if you if you end up counterattacking there, you're you're just gonna lose more troops than it's worth. Even if you do seriously damage two of his divisions, you're probably not gonna push him back. And even if you do push him back, um, I didn't know it was two divisions, but I knew roughly how many men. Um, even if you do push him back, uh, it's not worth it. You're better off just letting him not have enough troops there to take Batan and giving you two to three months of time where you're just you know he's tying down two divisions that could be doing other things. My counter-argument is, hey, it'd be great if he had to pull troops back into the Philippines to really secure it, but I but I, I do think he's probably right that uh, a counter-attack isn't super feasible. He could move more troops in tomorrow, too. That's a good point, like a G-man. All right, so Japanese deliberate attack at Nomaya. We'll see if the base finally falls to the Japanese. No, it does not. All right. So uh, the base at Nomaya holds again. The Japanese lose another 309 men. Two more squads destroyed. That's good for us. We lose a few squads destroyed, but overall, that is a very good result for us as these troops continue to refuse to surrender. Um, Japanese bombardment attack at Kaigan. Looks like they brought in a bunch of SNLF forces. Not a ton of real strength here, but more than we can 
uh, counterattack against. We can hopefully defend. I, I don't know if I have enough supply to defend there long, but in any event, the bombardment does nothing. Uh, Japanese deliberate attack at Manadao against some Dutch troops there. Japanese managed one-to-one -one assault odds, reduce fortifications to zero. They do take 52 casualties, but we take 149. Manadao is going to fall probably next turn. Uh, nonetheless, a squad destroyed. Is that it? Where was this, like, painful thing? J Street. I saw nothing painful in this entire day. Ah! Exit out of the game altogether. I hate that it does that. I mean, yeah, but I already knew I lost the tanker. Yeah, that sucks. It's not great. But, in all honesty, I'm not too worried about it. If I lose one tanker a month, I will be thrilled. And that's all we've really lost so far. Alright, so... What is the situation? Where's our carrier down here? Where are our carriers? Down here, no detection on them, so that's good. They're continuing to move toward New Zealand. They're moving at slow, deliberate pace. They're not taking any systems damage. They're just gradually moving on that way. Probably four, five, maybe six more days till they get there. You know, these guys are trying to limp back into port. Tons of system damage. A 6,500-ton coastal defense ship with two 11-inch guns for the Surabaya. That's interesting. I don't even know where it was. Where the heck did we even see that? I didn't even think I had that deployed anywhere. Oh, here it is. Oh, it was... This guy was the escort, I think, for my for my tanker that got, uh, got torpedoed. Uh, he doesn't even have depth charges. Why was it? Oh, he's hit by a 250 kilogram bomb? When was that? He suffered some serious damage. Um, he's probably going to get hit by a sub if I pull him back to Sorbet, but we're going to do it. He's going to be a sub magnet with all that damage. Go ahead and dock these guys, load fuel, transfer ships here, a destroyer. All right, so these guys are going to load up. Do we have any other ships here that we want to add to this task force? We can fit one more ship in here. So we're going to go ahead and load these three tankers that'll have about 20,000 capability of carrying fuel. We'll have one destroyer's escort. Meanwhile, the other tanker group is going to go ahead and disband because they can't dock yet. So we'll leave them in port for now. Um, in the safety of the port, the Sorbaya is going to move down to Sorbaya so they can try and repair themselves. And air combat. So these guys are all at Batavia right now. They've sucked almost all the fuel out of Batavia. Batavia has no more fuel for the task force, which is actually good because, you know, if there's no fuel left in Batavia, that means there's less fuel on the island of Java for the Japanese to get their hands on. It looks like there's still 13,000 at Sorbaya. Uh, meanwhile, Oosthaven has about 34,000 fuel. Palembang has about 27,000. Um, okay. Let's see here. Any aircraft lost on the ground? Nothing destroyed on the field today. Good. We lost one aircraft air-to-air. -air. We lost two operational. He lost nine operational, two by flak. So uh, 11 to 3 in terms of losses today. He lost two Lilies, two Bettys. We lost two Catalinas. He lost a Sonia, an An, and a Tina. A Mavis, a Nell, a Pete, a Babs, and we lost one DC-2. Okay. Let's top pilots. We've still got the lead ace wounded in action. We lost one pilot killed last turn. Um, ship sunk last turn. We did lose the Sun Chaser. It was worth 15 victory points. That's a reasonably good tanker there. 6,600 fuel capacity. Only makes 12 knots, though. Relatively slow. Um, it's an H-class tanker. Not the end of the world. Uh, would have rather not lost it, but we did. Uh, if we take a look at all the tankers that we've lost so far, 
You can see that was just the fourth tanker that we've lost. I don't really count the Angelina because that only has a 1,500 fuel capacity. So if we actually look at tanker losses, we lost no tankers in December. We lost one in the middle of January, one on the 22nd of January, and one on the 28th of January. Again, we're ignoring the Angelina. Um, the 22nd was the British Motorist, which was lost to the Japanese Carrier Battle Groups, and we've lost two to submarines. So overall, four tankers, not great, not terrible. 3.5 Rogden, not great, not terrible. We've also lost two uh, fleet oilers. One of them was to um, the Japanese carrier group as well. That was a, a bigger hit, the Pecos. <laughs> Can you explain to the people in the Dutch East Indies we want them to make less oil, not more? Well, we have turned off the refineries, but uh, the oil keeps coming out of the ground. It's, it's like a sucking chest wound. It just keeps oozing out, out of the ground. Um, okay, so these guys are here, still at 1083 in terms of assault value. Supplies are fine, 44,000. How many do we have a Patan? 41,000? That feels like that few, that supply level is dropping pretty rapidly. It was at like 47,000 like a day or two ago, wasn't it? Well, we do have a lot of troops there, but it shouldn't be eating that much supply. <sighs> Lame. We could try a deliberate attack. Maybe that would be more sound. But that I, I worry he'd be baiting us. It still says he has four more units at Clark Field, one at uh, Manila. P-35, what if I disband it? Send all pilots to the pool. What? Who is this pilot? Is he really a hero? I don't even know who the hero was. There's really not... There's like there's several pilots, so it's like they're all rotating turns to get into the plane and fly. Um, yeah, there's a wiki page for the... Uh, or for the D7. I don't know which ship that is, but... All right, so don't think we need to do anything in Singapore. Probably not wise to do anything with Tan. Um, where's this guy going? Hmm. Move here. Move to Beaufort. Maybe you can take something there. Uh, okay. So the Japanese still haven't taken all of the northern bases here. Let's see. I don't want to do anything with the carriers at Batavia. We're just going to kind of let them rest for the time being. Same with the cruisers. Maybe it actually would be best to get them out of there. I'm trying to think. Um, the squadron only has one swordfish left. What if we upgrade them to albacores? Or downgrade them to albacores? Can we upgrade now? No? Doesn't look like it. So that's a thing. Um, what if we upgrade these guys to the albacore? These are the land-based guys. Can we upgrade them now? We can. So we can upgrade this group to albacores. That will free up more swordfish for the carrier guys. So we'll do that. Retain groups, original swordfish one. I don't know what that means. Like, don't send them to the pool? I don't know what I just did. Sure hope I didn't just get rid of their swordfish ones. Or are they being stored? No, I don't know what I just did. All right, well those Australians are gonna get albacores. I don't. I hope the swordfish flow over to this group. Uh, do not upgrade. Okay. Okay, so we'll give this group to th we'll give the albacores to this group, and we'll see what happens with the swordfish. Meanwhile, I think actually I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull the Hermes out. I just I don't know. I it, maybe I don't I don't want to evacuate in, in Java, the naval forces that we have there, but I kind of do. I kind of do want to evacuate them, but I don't want to evacuate them, but I do want to evacuate them. Ugh, what a dilemma. Okay. I 
I'm making it easy for XTRG to butcher me? How am I making it easy for him to butcher me? I'm actually doing pretty well, J Street, in my opinion. Uh, the Japanese are nowhere near the historical pace of advance outside of everywhere but the South Pacific. And I think we're actually doing okay down there. Meanwhile, it looks like the Japanese might be moving some troops north toward uh, Burma. Uh, let's see here. Can we rebuild this unit yet? Everybody's in Pegu. They all need to be in the same mode. So we're going to set them all. Actually, let's set them all to this op mode. And these guys have unpack time. So there's two days that they have to unpack, and then we can go ahead and we can rebuild the division. At that point, we will have a full Burmese division at Pegu, which will be great. Um, let's see here. Rangoon, didn't we move some troops back there to reform? I thought we did. But maybe not. Okay. Uh, rifles. All right. Meanwhile, some of the troops are moving through India into Rangoon or into Burma. I don't know if we have a lot to do this turn. In all honesty, guys, it looks like we've got some fuel that's unloading at Karachi. Uh, we don't have it. Okay, so we've got some additional ships at uh, Abadan. Without, we're not we're not loading anything at Abadan. So we're going to go ahead. I don't want to do a tanker. Let's not do that. Let's do cargo. Let's form a cargo task force at Abadan. And let's just go for the biggest cargo carriers we can get. Fuel efficiency really doesn't matter that much. The guard is super fast, but that's okay. And we're just going to load these guys up as much as we can. I think we can even load the tanker there. Looks like we can dock them all. Oh, no, we can't dock them all. Damn it. How many? I must have missed the maximum size. Uh, let's go back to that. All right, so this one actually carries 7,500 fuel, but it also can carry 50, 550 fuel additionally. I think we're docked, right? Oh, yeah, we have 19,000 tons remaining. 4,000. All right. So 46,000 tons in this task force. We'll go ahead and load fuel. We'll load, it looks like, up to 25,000 fuel on all these ships. Again, not a very efficient method to transport, but it doesn't really matter all that much because uh, they all carry more fuel than they can consume, and so that means even if they used all their fuel, they would still have a slight net positive, and it's not a super long route, so that means that they should actually do better from an efficiency perspective. So we're going to load 25,000 fuel roughly on board this task force, uh, which will pull out of Abaddon. Uh, additionally, it looks like we've got some transports that are finally arriving at uh, Aden. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the Australian division there. Ooh, we got a lot of them that all just arrived. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and I think some of these guys are coming in as well, but I don't need all of them, I don't think. Ah, I didn't switch these guys to strat mode, which I should have done. Um, Aden, RN base force, can we change them to strat mode? But I don't think we can change our headquarters. No, I can't send change them. Okay. So the 6th Australian Division is going to take three days to change their pack mode. And as soon as they do, we're going to go ahead and load them up and we're going to send them to Australia, I think. We're going to send them somewhere. I don't know where. We'll send them somewhere. Um, somewhere good. It'll be, a, it'll be a good little trip for them. Uh, meanwhile, do we have more troops that have arrived in Karachi? Not really. The 2nd, uh, 3rd Machine Gun Battalion. They're part of the 7th Australian Division. The rest of them are at Aden? Really? But if the division is already formed without them, what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. That's interesting. Huh. I guess I'll leave them there for now. Maybe we would transport them to Australia too? That's weird. I didn't think you could do that. Um. Okay. So that's an ancillary unit to the 7th Division as well. Looks like we've got some units here at Cape Town. When is our battleship going to arrive there, by the way? We're loading up a bunch of supply, some 70,000 plus supply that's all going to be going to, uh, actually almost 100,000 supply. It's going to be going from Cape Town uh, to, this is going to Rangoon, right? Yeah. So you guys are going to be going to Rangoon. Looks like they might run out of fuel on their way. We'll see. 
Uh, we may have to pick up some some fuel and some tankers or something on the way. We've got some replenishment ships. We can stop them at, like, Sri Lanka or something. I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, we've got six tankers here at Cape Town, but we're waiting for fuel to arrive from the American East Coast. We've got 60,000 on the way there, another seven, 13 and another 7. Um, the surface task force, still a couple days away with the Prince of Wales. Uh, looks like they are currently 11 days away, so that's going to be fun when they arrive. Uh, the repulse is still in port, uh, repairing 98 days left till it is repaired. I think it was 99 yesterday. So they're making good, good progress there. Uh, the ships at Auckland, I think we've got a couple that are repairing, I think, or just the new Orleans, three more days till she's done. So we'll have three heavy cruisers and two light cruisers in the South at Auckland where the carriers are meeting up with us. A couple of beat up destroyers that are trying to limp their way there and then we've got two heavy cruisers in the Pensacola and the Minneapolis on the way back to Auckland as well but look at the Nomaya I mean these heroes continue to hold out the heroes that we need not the heroes that we deserve fourth Australian battalion or brigade there three assault value I mean these guys are just hanging on by the skin of their teeth but the more they can do the more damage they can do the longer they can uh, prevent the Japanese oh it's back to level one fortifications again good job boys um, the longer they can hold on the longer it'll take for the Japanese to strengthen their position in the area. Okay. Uh, you don't need to be moving at full speed. Uh, what if we say direct? Oh, that's a bad idea. Safer? Safest? Well, it says it's safe, I guess. Even though he's pretty damn close to Canton, he must not have much there. Uh, these guys are unloading fuel at Pago or Pago or however you say it. 14,000 fuel there. we got a destroyer doing anti-submarine warfare patrols there. I don't have a lot going on. Like, I'm just waiting. I've got troops and transport. I've got um, this unit here is moving a, a regiment to Norfolk Island. We've got some various naval units here at Norfolk and at Lord Howe Island providing some security from potential uh, silliness that XTRG might pull. Uh, we've got some tanker convoys that are kind of in route. Uh, we've got the carriers that are moving to Australia, to New Zealand slowly. And um, what else do we have going on here? I don't, I don't really know. It's a pretty dead turn. I'm sure there's more logistics or stuff I should be doing. These guys are going to Australia as well. Or sorry, New Zealand. A second USMC tank battalion, marine regiments, etc. Actually, one thing that I need to make sure I do here is turn off replacements. That eats a ton of supply. So can we just turn replacements off for everybody? Toggle replacement up, replacements off, off. All right, so we just turned all the replacements off, which should lower our supply consumption for these guys quite a bit. A lot of them are already like at their full complement, but not all of them. You can see like, oh, we can, oh, these guys are just beat up a little bit. But like here, you don't want to pull 40 new infantry squads because that'll chew through your supply like none other and it won't really add a ton of value here, so... Anyway, um, most of these guys are at target. Uh, meanwhile, off the U.S. West Coast, did these troops arrive yet? Yeah, okay, we got a, no, they, so a bunch of strat units have are here, but the new units haven't arrived yet, the ones that we're sending here from the East Coast. Looks like, actually, they are on their way. So the 182nd Infantry Regiment and the 132nd are both on their way to San Diego. These guys are already attached to the Pacific Fleet, which is nice. Where is the other unit in the American Infantry Division? Fort Ord, the 164th. We need 711 points to change these guys over. That is so much. I really want to form the Miracle Infantry Division, but I can't because I have nowhere near enough political points at, at this moment. Um, did we form the Australians up here yet or the Canadians up here? Still on the task force, which is where? Still loading them up? No, actually, they're they're loaded up. So cancel load supplies, and then these guys are going to go to St. Louis or Seattle, not St. Louis, and they're going to form a Austra or a Canadian brigade at Seattle. 
Um, first was a separate infantry battalion. Looks like these guys are going to arrive at Bora Bora and Crystal Ball. They're all assigned to the South Pacific. All right, nice. So in 22 days, we'll have another full infantry regiment. I'm going to go ahead and strategically move these guys to San Diego as well. San Diego is sort of my staging area for the for the Pacific Theater, I think. Um, seven hundred. Oh, these guys are permanently restricted. One sixty fourth. Yeah, these are the ones we need. Okay. Thirty fifth Infantry is permanently fixed. So yeah. All right, so we're still waiting on troops to move around and kind of get to get to their locations. I need more troop transports in San Diego. Anyway, I don't have next to any. Where are my troop transports? I've got one in Los Angeles, so I think we'll go ahead and transfer him to San Diego. Super exciting, awesome, strategic gameplay as we watch us move. Let's move transports. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move these guys down to San Diego. I'll check in with the chat in a sec, guys. Uh, anybody up here? Any any troop transports up here? Nope. Uh, here? Maybe? Maybe one at Mare Island? Transport. One AP. Yes. Yes, sirree, Bob. The Kota Ago Gogong. All right. Move it down here. Give me a troop transport or give me the Prussians. Um, Prince Rupert Island. All right, this guy's unloading supply here. 1 a.m. We need some supply to go up that direction. So we need to send some transports or some supplies up to Anchorage. I've got to find something where I've got like actual supply ships available. Why is there no one... No supply ships. All right, we got one at San Diego. I've, I've stripped almost all of my convoys, all my uh, merchant shipping to go to other duties. I don't want to use an AKV. Those things are more valuable doing other things, but we'll use this this cargo ship. It actually is pretty good cargo ship, 16 knots. So maybe that'll help her avoid any subs. We'll send it up here to Anchorage. Anchorage can supply Seward via the railway there, so that's good. And the rest of these guys. Kodiak needs some supply too. God damn it. Logistics. Curse thee. All right. Um, I'm not going to use him for that. We can use the Dixie. Load the tender. Unable. Oh, that's a gigantic tender. That thing is huge. I don't want to send a thing that's 10,000 tons. Otherwise, I would send it up there, but that's just too large. It's too big. All right, so we've got five AKLs. We'll load these guys up with some fuel and sprint them over to Colombo. They won't be carrying much. They won't be carrying very much, but they're going to sprint over there anyway because they won't use any fuel doing it. All right, so there's that. And then I think down here at Panama, we've got some additional ships that we can move to the East Coast. So we're going to go ahead and switch their base over to the actual... Whoa, where am I going? U.S. East Coast. We're going to sprint them too. All right, so that's all off map. Two subs there, too. All right, let's move some of these cargo ships to the west coast. These guys are big, fat, big, fat cargo ships with a good old destroyer, so we'll send these guys to San Diego. We could use more logistics here on the west coast. All right, so we'll send them there. Let's also get those subs out of... Panama. Panama! Panama! Uh, 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 uh. Alright, so we're going to move these guys to Pearl Harbor, where then they're going to get into the 
naval fight against the Japanese or more or less just sailing around and doing nothing. All right, so there's that. And I think that's about it, guys. Like, this is, feels like a kind of boring turn. I don't I mean, It looks like the Japanese have some... Whoa! Invasion convoy! Invasion convoy! Danger, Will Robinson! Danger! Where are these guys going? All right, they're going to Port Moresby. What about these guys? They're going to Port Moresby. All right. So we've got additional troops on the way to Port Moresby, but it looks like he's moving something directly west, APs and cruisers, toward Buna, I'm guessing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and send this guy over here to Buna itself. Maybe we can get a torpedo in. Um, something is moving southwest over here. Looks like he's got another unit over here moving southwest. So... Troops moving toward Buna, perhaps? Maybe moving around toward Port Moresby? If it is, I'm assuming it's the Kidu Butai, because it wouldn't make sense to make a major move there without it. I just don't think there's anything I can do about it. Um, let's get this tanker, the British Destiny, out of there in the event that he wants to revisit Australia with the Kidu Butai. We'll go ahead and get it over to Perth, to the other side of Australia. And let's not go that way. Let's take the long way. So we're going to head down this way. Hug the coast. Hug the coast. And take the long way. All right. So we'll do that. This guy's moving back to Brisbane. This one's pretty beat up, isn't it? No, he's not. All right. What about... Do we have a sub here at Brisbane that we can use? Or is that the one that's... It doesn't he must be in repair. Yep. Repair for six more days. Okay. Uh I've got some subs down here that maybe can move up that way. Probably not arrive in time. But we'll get them up that way. Move the subs up in this direction. And hope that we get there in time. We won't get there in time, but again it's more about doing whatever we can to make his life difficult. Returning to port to replenish. If you're returning to port to replenish, how about you go to Brisbane? Because I don't want you based out of the Dutch East Indies anymore. Uh, what about this guy? He's also returning to port. But again, screw the Dutch East Indies. You're not based out of there anymore because I said so. You're going to move to Brisbane also. Um... Pickerel. I thought I had a bunch of subs in the way at Truck, but apparently not. Move the subs. All right, the Pollock is just sitting there. So we'll move him over toward maybe toward Salamuya. He could be going toward Lay, too. So I guess we can move him over that way. Well, it says West. West is this way. So he's either moving here. Or he's moving here. But he's got to move either slightly north or slightly south. Meanwhile, it doesn't look like there's a threat for him to come over in this direction anymore. So we're going to go ahead and move these S-boats with their better Mark 10 torpedoes in this direction. We're also going to set their base to be Karens, which hopefully is closer to being in range for them. No, it says they're going to run out of fuel. Great. Can they use the waypoint on their way to go to Port Moresby? No, there's no fuel there. Well, lovely. All right, I guess they're just going to have to return to port first. All right, return to Cairns there. This Dutch sub, sub should have enough fuel. So we're going to move him over here. All right. All right, so moving subs around. Our subs have proved very useless against warships, but we're going to at least cram the seas into the Solomon Sea with a bunch of submarines to deal with whatever that invasion force is. These guys are moving southeast. This looks like the mini Kidu Butai, so he's moving in this direction. I don't know what he's moving toward. I don't really have anything that I can do against him either. He's moving to Brisbane. Don't use full speed. You're still going to run out of fuel. Go to Darwin, I guess, to get more fuel. All right. This S-boat is also going to run out of fuel. Not going to make it to Port Moresby. Maybe they can make it to Darwin. 
It's the Subs Returning to Port episode. Brought to you by Snickers. Why wait? All right. Um, these guys are going to maintain their patrol zones. More vessels moving southwest. Mm. All right, you're going to move here. Do I have anyone carrying supplies to Bataan? That doesn't look like it. Oh, wait. There's 900 fuel here. Go to Definitely go here. How much fuel does this guy carry anyway? 120. So there's enough fuel at Sandakan to load up with fuel and then also uh, to take some... Is there any supply or just fuel? Oh, there's only... There's just supply. All right, whatever. All right, so let's check the chat. Yeah, Buna looks like it might have some vacationers soon. Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll find out what the invasion fleet has soon enough. Just not quite yet. This is kind of going west. Some heavy cruisers moving west. So, I mean, he's really flooding the the Karim Sea and the Banda Sea with various task forces. He needs to take all these bases and he needs to do it relatively quickly. So, you know, he's doing that. These guys are moving to Surabaya. They'll have 16,000 fuel that they can load up. These guys are moving to Perth. They're not even... I mean, I guess they do carry enough fuel to make it fuel efficient to do this, but it's just a silly, silly thing. Don't move there. There's no reason to go there. Go to Oosthaven. I guess the one thing we can do here is that we know he has some submarines in the area. So we should probably form an ASW task force. The main question is what happened? I thought I had a task force that had some Corvettes. What happened to them? What happened to my Corvettes? Where did they go? Are they here? No? Here? No? Where did my Corvettes go? They're the best at anti-submarine operations. Maybe I sent them with one of the tanker task forces. 20,000 fuel coming this way from Abaddon. Okay. Big, fat, heavy laden Caspia. Worth 28 victory points with a black silhouette there. That's a valuable tanker. Alright, so let's just form a new anti submarine task force. ASW. Uh, here. We at least got the Jupiter, which is level 8. ASW. We will go ahead and set max react at three. We're going to go ahead and set a patrol zone. We're going to set one hex here. And then we're just going to patrol the waters approaching Oosthaven because I believe that's where the sub was in these shallow waters. And then we're going to Hopefully have some success there cleaning that area out with uh, an ASW task force. So I don't want to strip all of our destroyers from those other task forces, but at least we'll have our best ASW uh, mines at, at work. Meanwhile, I guess the one other thing we need to check on here is China. Looks like he's got more reinforcements on the way to Changsha. He's got 43 units there. What are the troops here at Changsha? Are they all in combat mode? They are. That's a lot of fucking troops. 93,000 infantry. 99,000 second line troops. Almost 200,000 soldiers. Almost 1,000 guns, too. 
Part of me wants to bombard him, but it looks like he's got. We've got a lot of mortars there. I don't think that would necessarily be the best idea. It also chews up a lot of supply, of which we don't have enough. So we'll leave them as is. Um. Okay. What if we got a reasonably large force at Nan Nan Yang? What if we tried to go for for Xin Yang and tried to split his forces in Changshao with his forces south here at Changsha? Try and get a little bit more of the initiative back. We don't need to move everybody. I think maybe we just move these troops. About a thousand, a little bit over a thousand. Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know what he has here. I guess it'd be easy enough to move these guys. Are they moving here? No, they're moving east. So where are they moving? To this hex? To cut the road? I guess let's let these guys move back into rest. And we'll see what that isolated sort of scout core can detect. Meanwhile, the Flying Tigers have stood down. Their fatigue is back to good. So we're going to go ahead and switch them back to Escort. We're going to go ahead and switch them over to Long Range Cap to 100. We're going to fly them over Changsha again. Maybe we'll catch some bombers. Maybe we'll just get in an air fight. But we'll have 21 fighters to do it with. Um, meanwhile, what's actually the air situation look like at, at Singapore here? We didn't lose anyone on the ground last turn. We've got 20 Aero Cobras now. We've got 70 ready aircraft. They're all fighters, I think. 68 are fighters. Hurricanes are nearly at full strength. There's no fatigue for anybody. Problem with the Aero Cobra is it's disastrously bad. At anything above 15,000 feet. Actually, it's got better maneuverability at 16 to 20 than I thought. Um, set it to 15. It'd, it would shred bombers, though. I'm thinking what we'll do here is we'll send them up for one more fight at 100% cap. And then, you know, after they get shredded, after we lose a bunch of aircraft, hopefully we do some more damage to them. But then we'll just pull the aircraft out. As soon as the, the formations basically become non-viable, we will evacuate Singapore. But I'm not ready to do that quite yet. So I'm going to go ahead and set everybody to 100% cap. At their various altitude settings. Which we'll maintain. Maybe we'll get a big air battle. I mean, if he's really going to be sending like 60 nates, I, I don't, I'm not optimistic about my chances against the zeros, but if we do you know, catch a, a, a Nate force, we could really shred some of his fighters. The Air Cobra has a big fat cannon if he sends a bomber formation. And if I don't do anything, they're going to start hitting them on the ground anyway. So I think what we'll do is we'll do one more major air fight with them, and then maybe we'll pull them out. We're going to send some additional uh, fighter aircraft out of the Dutch East Indies as well. We're going to set them to long range cap. We're going to set them at 25. He's sweeping at 25. So let's set all these guys to 26 at Singapore. Set all fighters at this base. So we'll get an additional 25 fighters out of here. So we'll have about 100 fighters. We'll have staggered formations all the way down to the bombers, including some that might actually be up and above the enemy fighters. Pull some units from Changsha. I can't fight them head to head, that's for sure. But I think we can leave them in place for another turn or two. I'm not, I mean, it doesn't matter. So the Buffalo's getting shot up. The aircraft don't matter. The pilots matter. But there will be a big air battle over Singapore next turn. We'll see how it turns out. Okay. I'm curious what he's moving down here. 
Can we get some recon over that? Let's do some recon on these boys. Let's figure out what we're up against. Let's do some recon on these boys. Let's figure out what we're up against. Gonna sing all day, all night. <laughs> do we have any bombers yet? Are we building any yet? Nope. Still basically nothing. Great. All right. So recon over this base. Recon. Nope. We need the bombers. Recon over this base. Recon over this base. All right. So that's going to be that. We're going to have a whole bunch of recon flying out of Rangoon. So we'll hopefully get a good eye on what he's sending north to deal with Burma as well as what the force is here, hopefully. Um, yeah. Recon, boss. Yeah, the Burma Division will be ready in three days, at which point we'll move them toward uh, Pegu, or east of Pegu, and hopefully we can deal the Japanese force, whatever it is there. A little bit of a surprise. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this turn, guys. I don't have a lot else going on. Logistics, logistical things are in motion. Um, some of these ASWs have returned to base. Do we want to load any troops on here? We could load this tank battalion, but I don't. I, I don't want to leave Hawaii too weak because of how aggressive he's been. So I think I should probably actually leave the forces that we have in Hawaii in place. What we could do is we can move those troop transports back to um, San Diego. I'm going to transfer the light cruiser out of there. Well, actually, no. We're going to want some escorts for these guys. So we should probably, because we're going to be transporting like two full regiments of troops. So we'll want to have some escorts for them. So we're going to have these guys go back to San Diego. And they're going to help loading up all those all those new troops that are about to arrive. Punishment, you can disband. Cargo, disband. Alright, so we're doing that. We're still doing well on supply and fuel at Pearl. So yeah, not a super exciting turn, but a turn nonetheless. Um, spoken like a true wa warrior or wisdom or whatever. Spoken with true wisdom. Can we replenish these guys? Johnston Line has no fuel for these guys. Can we get them back to Pearl? That's not a very long distance, right? Yeah, but they still can't. I don't understand why no one can. They can't make it without getting massive damage. No one can carry even just a tiny little bit of fuel to Johnson Island, or we can't. We can't do like a small little replenishment run. I don't want to send a tanker. He's had a lot of subs active in the area. I'd rather send a cargo ship that can carry fuel. Or I guess I can just order them to carry fuel. So I guess we'll do that. So we'll load this guy up with 1600 fuel and send him to Johnson Island. Again, not a very efficient thing to do, but at least I don't want to lose a tanker if he's got a bunch of subs there. So it's a relatively low risk thing to do. Even if he sinks it, it's just a merchant ship. Who cares? All right. Uh, these guys are unloading fuel here at Christmas Island. We're building it up as sort of a secondary stopping stopover point. I could use some more troops there. <laughs> that's that's how we're going to use it. Um, all right. All right. Okay. So I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Um, until next time. Uh, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you guys for tuning in and watching, 
and I hope you guys have a great night. Sorry for the slow turn, not a ton going on, but hey, we'll see what happens with that big air battle over Singapore, and that's a good idea. We should name this turn 3.6 Rodkin. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.